Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. So glad to be here with you today. And it's a beautiful, beautiful day here in Central Florida. I hope it is wherever you're watching. And we are delighted to have you, whether you're a regular viewer or if you're a brand new viewer. I think uh, you'll be very, very um, grateful if you stay with us the whole program because we're talking about something that's very, very, very important. Uh, my guest is Linda Rooks, and she's an author. She was on with us uh, several years ago, actually. And she has written a book, Fighting for Your Marriage While Separated. And I just wonder how many, what is the great percentage of marriages that, you know, they hit a rough spot and they separate and uh, they don't wait. They don't wait on the Lord. They don't wait for the dust to settle. They, they don't wait. They j jump into something else that would make a separation permanent. And this is not just about Linda's marriage. This is a book that has uh, many marriages that have been willing to share their story. And it's a good thing because they're all a little bit different. Uh, marriages don't break up for just the same reason. There's many, many reasons that they can break up. And, but the only thing I could really get to this, the greatest thing was give God some time. You know, whatever situation you're in right now, God's not in a hurry. Give God some time. Let him work on you. Let him work on your mate. And just uh, take a deep breath and slow down. And um, I think you're going to enjoy very much what she has to say. Also, I'm going to join Stephanie. Looks good. Creamy lemon angel hair. Uh, th I think you'll notice that most of the entrees we do here are really quite inexpensive because I think that's what a lot of people look for in this day of uh, very high prices. It really looks good. I know I'll like it because of all the ingredients in it, but I hope you will. Also, before I join her, though, I was going through our little closet, and I found quite a few copies of Israel and the Middle East. If you watch the program regularly, you have seen David and Kathy Walker on here. Wonderful, wonderful missionary evangelists. Um, David started preaching when he was 12 years old, and he's, he's now a great-grandfather. And he really was a boy preacher. And they have been literally all over the world very qualified to write a book like this. And you know, if you listen to the news or read your newspaper, things are heating up in the Middle East. There's no question. And so he can tell you a lot about the basics there, give you, give you an understanding. So I pulled this out of the closet. I got a few of them. And uh, they're yours for $23 gift. That includes the shipping and handling and uh, I know when we offered these before they went very well so I would suggest that you uh, get your order in right away while the, we have a few left. 1-800-229-0059 is the number for credit cards and debit cards and if you want to write to us Homekeepers Box 6922 Clearwater Florida 33758 and I cannot overemphasize how I love getting your notes and your emails, such encouragement. It really means a lot. So thanks for taking the time to do that. And it looks like we got a lot of... Um, this smells so good, <laughs> just deconstructed. I can't wait to try it put together. Well, so, so before we start talking, yes. I'm going to put a tablespoon of olive oil and two t tablespoons of, of butter, okay? And mm -hmm. I'm going to melt that down. Then I'm going to put garlic, mm -hmm. okay? And the ingredients will come up on the end, on the screen, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can get it, okay? Yeah. I'm going to put garlic, and I'm going to put three lemons that are thinly sliced and de-seeded in here, okay? Yeah, although we, we cut that down to two. It looked like too many. Susan and I, I didn't had, think that would Susan be possible and I had for an you. Exec, an executive meeting. Okay. Yes. Okay. So do it to your liking, your mm -hmm. taste. I'm put I some think garlic. our viewers know we change things around every right? once in a while. Yes, we do. Well, you do that at home, so you can do it. We do it here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to crank this heat up, and get the garlic in there. I'm going and to. And I get... heard you had the most glorious weekend. <gasps> oh, I went to the beach and I read for three hours. I went early in the morning, mm -hmm. so it wasn't too hot, 7.30 to 10.30, and I just read a book. What'd you read? Can you tell it's us? A, yeah, it's, a, it's about a military family, mm -hmm. and the husband goes away, and there's two boys, so the mother decides to have people over for dinner once a week. Interesting people. The mayor of the city, um, different uh, elected officials, so good people the from kids. the church. So they authors, 
uh, artists. I mean, all, and it just tells the whole story because you don't realize what families, if you're not a military family, mm -hmm. you don't know what pa they go through when the dad is gone, when the husband is gone. So this whole book is about what this mother did to help mm -hmm. her children not be lonely, to fill the seat at the table, and they that learned so much. So yes. It's dinner with the smileys if you want to get it. That's what it's called. And you called. just put. Uh, I put the onions. Uh, I mean the, the onions. Lemon. Now see, I'm, I'm. I gotta get refocused. I put the lemons mm -hmm. in here. I got this cranked up. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna soften these lemons up real quick. Okay. I'll give you those. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna put salt, pepper, and flour. Oh. Yeah, it takes a lot for me to read a book because it has to get my attention. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm like, if you don't get my attention in the first chapter, I can't finish you. Well, you don't look real tan. What, what you do? I was well. It was Love early in the morning, and I wasn't facing the sun. Sunscreen I, 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 is I, a I, important commodity so here. So important, and you know, after going through cancer, I don't want to take any chances no. of anything. So, nope. yep. So I'm softening this up. Now I'm gonna put flour. two tablespoons of flour. This and look. Look at all this cheese. Mm -hmm. Look at all this yummy cheese. So we it's have Parmesan. Parmesan, Gruyere, and, and well, it's supposed to be Pecorano uh, Romano, but that's mm -hmm. Asiago because you couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. So you can substitute, that's okay. Uh, oh. This has got to be crazy when, when you eat it with all that variety of cheese. I'm going to put chicken broth in here. And we got more here if we need it. Yep, yep, this is just going to thicken up real quick. Oh my goodness. This is kind of a different. It smells so good in here, y'all. So good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna start melting some cheese. Well, we just uh, you know take your time at home. I'm yeah, rushing. We just celebrated Mother's Day, and mm -hmm. boy, it was interesting on Facebook um, to have all your friends, their mothers come. It was a great. It was just a great weekend because there's so much bad news. Yes. And yes. Um, just to see people really appreciate their mothers and grandmothers. My daughter put the cutest picture of herself on there when she was learning the harp. Yes. And the harp was so much bigger than she was. So sweet. And she was thanking me and her dad for taking her to harp lessons every week. And it just, you raise a kid that's, that's kind of grateful. It's, it's a wonderful satisfaction. Being a parent is the greatest, hardest job yes. <laughs> ever. It's the, the most love the and it's the worst worry and everything like that. Yep. So, yeah. So my daughter and I went to lunch, we went to church, we went to lunch. I just enjoyed it so much mm -hmm. now that I'm an empty nester and I'm still trying to figure that all out. So do we put this on here and then you nope, put that No, I'm going to put the pasta right in here. I'm oh, just you gonna, do? Just give me one second here. I'm just oh, adding I want to taste it. I'm trying. Holy. You have a great Come guest on. to get to. I got to uh -huh. try to move it, move it. Okay, let me get something to get the pasta out Does with. Does this go on there now? It could. Yeah. You didn't want too much lemon, so... So let's just put, that's a lot of pasta. So let's mm -hmm. just put this in here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to oh give my. you some, and then we'll add more later so I can give you some. This is the cheese, most cheesy goodness ever, <laughs> seriously. I've never seen anything with that it's much cheese. It's just cheesy goodness. And you know, some of that cheese is pretty expensive. So it might not be the most budget friendly, but I can guarantee it's going to be the most tasty. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm so excited to try it. Yeah, I think it's hot. I'm gonna try it too, just uh -huh. because. Oh, here, here. Let's make it pretty. Pop. There you go. Oh my goodness. Parsley. You've been throwing your fork down a lot lately. You know what that means? That means it's delicious. Oh, boom. Oh. Let me be a lady here. Because we had this happen one other time. <laughs> the lemon is so fresh. There is a heaven. And the cheese is delicious. Oh. You want it. And it is called a lemony something, a cheesy lemon angel hair. That's what it's called. Holy moly. That'll come up on your screen. If you want it, it's free. The recipe's free. And the email's the best, but check out the information, see what you want to use. And that's coming right up. And I'm going to introduce you to Linda Rooks in just a second. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers.
All right, it's my delight to introduce to you Linda Rooks, and she, you kind of had this ministry for a long time. Um, you were separate, you and your husband separated for three years, mm -hmm. and if you take God out of the, equa uh, the equation, um, that statistic would be very, very, very narrow. Right, right. Yeah, the statistics show that about 80% of the people who are separated actually get divorced. So it 80%. is. 80%. That's, that's the statistics I've seen, right. Mm -hmm. so, so being able to, to be separated and get back together statistically is rare. But mm -hmm. in our experience with the ministry that we do, we have seen it often happen many, many, many times. Many people who are separated are able to get back together. But you can't, but you need to know what to do. You know, right. because the, the, the natural reaction is not the reaction that works. You know, we, we, we go by our nature, but mm. that's not always the way God would have us do it. <laughs> it fighting for your marriage while separated. <clears throat> and I would assume a lot, mostly ladies probably watching right now, who are separated. And you kind of, at loose ends, you don't know what to do. This book really gets down to some detail that I think if you would follow uh, what is suggested here, you might have a better opportunity of getting a good result. Now, how long ago were you and your husband separated? It was 20 years. We've been back together for 20 years at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, separated three years. Right. I'm surprised somebody didn't marry somebody and <laughs> make it worse. <laughs> Well, you know, that's what most people think. You mm -hmm. know, one of the problems that we have, I think, is, is, uh, is, is that people think that once you're separated, that means you're going to get a divorce. Mm -hmm. And that really is not correct. If you handle it correctly, you really, a separation can just be a time of healing mm -hmm. and you can get back together. Mm -hmm. but, but the problem is, is that most people um, immediately are doing the wrong thing. You mm -hmm. know, the one who's very often when a separation occurs, it's one person who wants out and one person who, who wants to keep the marriage. And the one who wants to keep the marriage, the problem that happens usually is that they are anxious to solve the problems. You know, mm -hmm. they want to, okay, why are you doing this? What's happening? Why are, when are you going to come home and all that? But when you, when you chase after the person who's left, you're basically kind of pushing them farther away because that person, when they have left, there's a conflict going on. They're either running from conflict in the home or they're running from conflict that's running, raging around in inside themselves. themselves. Mm -hmm. And it can be one or the other. But, but if you pursue them, you're just creating more conflict. And so the very first principle you know, that I talk about in this book um, that needs to happen is that the person that has been left needs to give space to the one who has left. And that means you don't call, you don't text, you don't email. You, Boy, know, that's, you give them some time. Yes, because um, that is everything against your instincts. It is. Everything. I traveled for 20 years speaking in churches and most of the time gave my testimony. And um, I can't tell you the people who would come to, up to me who regretted getting married again, marrying the wrong person, mar oh, marrying yeah. someone else. I mean, they, one guy stood there and told me and the poor wife was standing there. He said, I, I made the wrong thing. And um, mm -hmm. we live in a society that is in a hurry no matter what the project. And this is one time so important because you're breaking up a holy covenant Exactly. You better go slowly and give God a chance. And I, I love some of the things in this book. And I might be jumping ahead of myself, but um, you've got a chapter in here called Nurture Yourself. Mm. Treat yourself <laughs> uh, once in a while. It's, you know, when, when you're upset over a separation, you're consumed, you're consumed with it. Right. And probably not too attractive. So how come that chapter ended up in there? Because that is one of the things. If, if you can start nurturing yourself, you know, you, and people who, are, <clears throat> people who are 
in a situation like that, like you just said, they're usually so stressed out. And if they can and not make real it, attractive. <laughs> no, yeah, right. And if they can just make it an effort to actually nurture themselves, do some things that you like, take mm -hmm. a bubble bath, you know, uh -huh. go take a walk in the park, you know, go on a bike ride, mm -hmm. you know, spend some time doing something fun that you like, go to a movie you like, you know, mm -hmm. something that you enjoy that you can kind of nurture yourself. Because one of the problems, you know, when a marriage is split up like that, is a lot of times you have depended on your spouse to make you happy and your spouse cannot make you no, happy. You, can't. you need to take care of yourself in one sense, but mainly you need to depend on God for your happiness. God is the only one who's going to really make you happy. So when you can kind of calm down, you know, uh, um, one scripture I love is is um, be, be at peace and know that I'm God, you know. And so if you can just take a little quiet time and focus on God and nurture yourself a little bit. Like you say, you are more attractive, mm -hmm. you know, and um, you're not running after your spouse. And um, and then, you know, there's some other points you know, that I can make, but I'll let you. <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, I know this kind of thing well enough to know that when that the person that was left and they begin to probably all psychological, but when they begin to act a little bit more independent, like they, somehow that other person finds them more attractive and maybe a little threatened even. There's a lot of psych psychological games that go on in these situations. Mm -hmm. However, Linda really promotes waiting on the Lord and uh, getting your directions from Him, but, but you can't get away from that human nature either. Right, right. Yeah, when I when we were separated, you know, I, people will ask me, well, how did you wait? How did you know to do the things that you did? And and I was thinking about it the other day, and I thought, you know, it was like God kind of little left little breadcrumbs along the way by bringing people into my life that just gave me little nuggets of wisdom, and and they gave me the right kinds of wisdom, you know, to follow. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things was. Um, one of my friends, um, we were out and I was talking on and on, you know, about what was going on and, you know, he'd left and he did this and that and the other thing. And she said, Linda, call him up and tell him to take a year to figure himself out. He's confused. And I said, a year? This one had been a couple of weeks, you know. And she said, yes, think about it. If he takes a year and he figures himself out, and you get back together and you have 20 happy years after that, wouldn't it be worth it? That was a prophecy. And I mean, I thought, well, yeah, I guess it would. And of course it was three years, but we had had 20 happy years since we got back together. Exactly at this point. I, so. I put that in the miracle column, really. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it seemed like it at the time, but now, you know, after we got back together and then I wrote my first book, Broken Heart on Hold, and after that, I started getting so many emails from people who are reading the book asking me all these questions. And, and at, at then my husband and I decided to start a ministry in our church for people whose mm -hmm. marriages were in trouble. And we've been doing that for 12 years. And it is amazing to me. It is just beautiful. I just love it how many times oh, in our classes, you know, people will work it out, sometimes not right away, not even by the end of the class. Sometimes it's four years later and they get back together. And in the emails that I get from people, there's, there's people who will write me back and forth, will go back and forth writing. And then I get an email three years later, they have gotten back together. But they're doing the right things. Mm -hmm. You know, they have, they have gotten it all together. And so that's why I wanted to write this book because I could see how, you know, when you do it the right way, you can get your marriage mm -hmm. back together. And uh, your marriage ministry is just a little bit different than any that we've ever seen before. Because a lot of times a, a marriage ministry in a church is one that's kind of nurturing and promoting marriages that are already quite healthy. Right. Uh, you're, mar you're talking to those that are on the brink. Absolutely. And the name of the book is Fighting for Your Marriage While Separated. And I have no doubt that uh, some of you watching today, that, that's your, that is your story right now. Um, was, there any, was there any time during that separation, okay, this is it. Uh, 
the three years, say, okay, I'm, I'm done. That I thought it or that he thought it? E either or both. <laughs> well, at one point, um, yeah, at the beginning, um, we were separated for a while. We went to a counselor, and her goal was to just get us back in the house together, you know. And so mm -hmm. he did move back in, and we were back together for two months, and he left again. This time he was talking about possibly a divorce. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that had happened is when he moved back in, nothing had changed. Mm -hmm. And unless there's change that takes place, you know, there can't be a marriage reconciliation. And so um, some people do reconcile too quickly. You know, their goal is get back together, you know, and so they do. But it's... But very many, not very many people have heard that statement before. Yeah. Change has Reconcile to happen. Reconcile too quickly, yes. You know, if a marriage is separated, I mean, that something is broken in mm -hmm. that marriage. There's something that has to change. And mm -hmm. the problem that with most of us mortals is that we keep trying to so solve our problems the same way we've always done mm -hmm. it, you know. But when you have a separation, you need to step back from the situation, take a new look, and and analyze what's been going on in your marriage and what needs to change. And look in the mirror. Yeah, and focus on God. I mean, that's absolutely crucial. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, uh, the the other woman that gave me great advice w said, put your husband on the back burner and focus on God and see what He wants to tell you. And when I did that, you know, I saw that God had things to tell me, changes I needed to make. And so, um, as I started making some changes and he started seeing those changes in me, that changed his attitude. And so, you know, there's just, and one of the real crucial thing too I'll add in here is um, another thing that happens when you do start communicating after you've given space mm. and you do start communicating, the important thing at that point is to be positive with your spouse. You don't, you, it's like, okay, we've had space for six weeks and now let's solve the problems, you know, let's find out what issues, are, but it, that person is going through still a troubled time. They're still trying to figure themselves out and you need to, um, they need to feel safe. Did and you so, have children there at that time? Yeah, we had two daughters. How old were they? Well, one of them was in college, the other was in high school, so she was at home. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that add to the situation? You obviously had one that was grown and now the house, uh, but um, I'm sure you deal with a lot of them that have children much younger. Oh. Well, that's another chapter it's, I have it's, in, it's the book, in the book, is how to guard your child's heart because no matter how old they are. In fact, the one chapter on the children was written by my daughter, who is now a counselor. She's a mental health counselor. Really? And so she not only went through it herself, but now she counsels um, both children and she counsels married couples. So she really had a perspective on that. And so um, it, I was so pleased that she was willing to write that because she talks about how even though she was in college, I mean, she was like, she it was still like has an drifting effect. out there, you know, ch trying different things, and all of a sudden the anchor that she had yes. at home was gone. Yeah. You know, that was the one thing that kind of was solid, and she didn't have it anymore. And so no matter how old they are, it's, it's really important to be able to handle that correctly. And I didn't always do it correctly, and so that, oh, really? was, important. <laughs> that, was, that was an important chapter for me to write. <laughs> uh, I want to remind you of this book that it's not, it's not just Linda's story. It's uh, how many different ones are in here. I didn't count them, but uh, people who have gone through this have told their stories. And so um, one size doesn't fit all, but you've got enough in there in here right now that anybody who's separated, I think they could find uh, a place that is familiar. Right, right. And, and also, you know, I try to take them through all of the different types of steps that they need to take. Mm -hmm. You know, it just goes. In fact, some people, you know, when I was, did interviews before um, for my first book, I always got a question about, well, what happened to bring you back together? And I could never answer that question because there wasn't just one thing mm -hmm. that happened. And so before I was doing an interview a few weeks ago, I was praying about that and I thought, I know I'll get answer, asked that question again. And, I, and it was like God said, you have the answer. It's every chapter in this book 
develops one of the things that I did that brought the marriage back together. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's, there's a map <laughs> in a way for how yeah. to bring your marriage back together. And we have had that website up for quite a while. You can get the book through that, and I'm sure all the other outlets like Amazon and right. all those. Right. Uh, fighting for your marriage while separated. And it's, it's very refreshing to find a book that will say, okay, we're not going to give up just because he's been gone for two weeks. Three years is, is quite a while. Maybe the two of you were slow, slow learners, what do we know? <laughs> but um, did you average out in this book the examples you used, uh, what would be the average time? Because in the world, three years, forget it. But God can do anything. Some of those people were five years. There's a really? couple that are seven years that were separated. The, the last story in the what, what, second to the last story is about a, a, a woman who waited seven years. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's several that, you know, even longer. I mean, people, it's just amazing. But when you're holding on to God, because if you're going to, you know, what's the reason for divorcing? Are you going to get remarried again? You know, what is it you're mm -hmm. trying to do? And if that's not your goal to go into another relationship, then hold on to God and let God direct you. You know, lean on to mm -hmm. God, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you know tells us exactly mm -hmm. what we need to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. Mm -hmm. If you can take that scripture and just really lean right. on it. Right. And when that emotional dust kind of settles mm -hmm. and you know everything He's done wrong and you've rehearsed it and written it on the chalkboard and everything, <laughs> then go look in the mirror and uh, ask the Lord Say, show me. A lot of a lot of times, you know, you have traits and <clears throat> things that are very, very negative and you're not, not aware of it. We've all been raised differently. And we tend to follow what, mm -hmm. the way we were raised. And um, that's not always a, a good pattern at all. Let me remind you again, the name of the book is Fighting for Your Marriage While Separated. And this has got some miracles in it. I think that this is a miracle mm -hmm. to be separated for three years and bring it back together and 20, 20 years now since you came back together. That is a wonderful testimony. And uh, you know, when you have a covenant between the Lord and your mate, he doesn't want it ripped up. Give him time, give him time. See what he wants you to do. And uh, join me next time, friends, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.